And now we're going to spend a bit of time looking at systems which support electric vehicle charging, coordinate things like load balancing, are able to uh, coordinate things like measuring how much electricity goes into different charge points and are able to help different charge points uh, talk to each other and operate in a network. So I just thought I'd mention uh, here are a couple of photos of electric vehicles from apartment buildings in the North Sydney area. We can see a Mercedes EQC on the left and a Hyundai Kona on the right. So also we're seeing electric vehicles come into the buildings now that are not just Teslas, but coming from a number of different brands. So in terms of electric vehicle charging supplies on the market, there's now a pl plethora of different uh, systems, software systems that can be used to coordinate electric vehicle charging. Uh, in particular, we're, we're interested in the billing software area here, and we'll, we'll drill into that a little bit more um, in this section. So uh, some names of some different EV charging billing systems uh, that correspond to different uh, EV charging installers in the market are here. And uh, we'll go through a few case studies where um, uh, we look at some of these different software systems helping to coordinate uh, EV charging in apartment buildings. So um, if we look over at the zinc building in Alexandria, um, this is an interesting example of um, using a number of different tech solutions in this particular building. So if you think about it, this building has uh, a 25 kilowatt solar system for the common areas. It's got three electricity monitoring devices permanently installed in the building on different circuits. And now it's got 10 Tesla generation three charge points, um, which all connect to Wi-Fi. There's Wi-Fi through the car park area and they've got a flat cable uh, on the perimeter of the um, car park area. So if people haven't seen a flat cable before, here is a flat cable running down the perimeter of a car parking, um, underground basement car parking. Now, just to let you know, um, we're not focused so much on the flat cable today. We're focused more around the uh, load management system that might operate on uh, a set of flat cables, uh, being uh, able to dictate how much um, power supply is supplied onto different flat cables and manage that during peak periods of uh, electric vehicle charging in the building. So let's have another look at another EV charging case study. We'll go to the Altair building in Potts Point. Uh, so this is a building that's used EV box charge, charge points, and they've used Car Charger's dynamic load balancing system, which has software algorithms that manage load balancing at a circuit level. And I will mention that this is one of the buildings that has used Wi-Fi in the basement car park, and they're using Wi-Fi connectivity to the EV box chargers. So just to give you a picture, here's an example of a charge point in the basement car park. And you'll notice that there's only one cable, which is a power cable going to this charge point. There's no data cable going to this charge point because this charge point connects to a Wi-Fi network. Um, and so it's using Wi-Fi connectivity. And then in the main switch room, you'll have this dy dynamic load balancing equipment. Um, and that has the software algorithms to be able to manage load balancing on a per circuit level. If for example, you've got multiple flat cables um, that uh, need to be managed uh, to not overload at the same time. So let's look at another EV charging uh, case study. This time we'll go to the Richmond building in Piermont. And uh, this is a, a building that's um, got 10 Tesla Generation 3 charge points uh, in the basement car park. They've got two Charge Fox charge points. Um, and They've got 
hardware load balancer for the ChargeFox charge points, and they'll be using software load balancing via Wi-Fi for the Tesla charge points. So uh, let's just have a look um, at some equipment here, uh, some tech solutions in this building. So on the right, you've got a new 70 pole, 160 amp distribution board installed into the basement car park just for the purposes of charging electric vehicles. And then next to this, you have a data connectivity box that can run ethernet cables from the charge points. Uh, the ChargeMate, ChargeFox um, charge points will use ethernet cables, which will plug into this uh, box. And they'll also run power cables that plug into this box. And that's repeated on each floor of the basement car park. They've got three floors, so they've got three sets of these two boxes um, in that particular building. Um, but we should just mention uh, some of the tech uh, solutions that are coming to charge points. So we've noted that some charge points in the market are now becoming Wi-Fi enabled so that you don't need to run data cables to them. But also uh, the latest Tesla Generation 3 wall charger has the ability to connect to Wi-Fi and get software updates into these charge points that will actually update the functionality of the charge points over time. So that gives you a level of future proofing that you might not have with uh, a charge point system where you might need a technician to come out to the building and install firmware updates into uh, charge points over time. So um, the sort of uh, functions that might be able to be rolled out by Tesla via an over the air update of the software into these charge points over time might be support for open charge point protocol or support for charging non-Tesla vehicles and uh, creating an open charging platform uh, that, that can work. And uh, up to six of these um, Tesla charge points can be uh, installed without the need to install any load balancing hardware in the switch room. They can affect software load balancing through using Wi-Fi communications to talk with the different charge points in the network. So, Again, we're still at the Richmond building. We'll just look at the overall load balancing architecture that they've got here. So uh, they've allocated 100 amps uh, three phase for EV charging at the moment. Uh, they've got 50 amps three phase allocated to the Tesla charging, 50 amps uh, three phase allocated to the charge rocks at the moment, but they could rebalance this over time. And they've got 10 uh, Tesla generation three charge points off Wi-Fi within this 50 amps and two charge point charge po charge points with the charge fox cloud management system uh, running off that 50 amps and then they're also future proof because they've got two different uh, management systems for billing and cost recovery they've got the tesla system coming online that'll use credit card transaction fees so people will um, put their credit card number into a tesla mobile phone app and each time they charge, um, a micropayment will come off their credit card. And then uh, here's the dashboard for the ChargeFox uh, management system. Okay, and now one last example of uh, an EV billing and load balancing um, software system. Again, written here in the local market is Explorin. Um, and they're doing R&D into uh, load balancing for apartment buildings, but they've got a, a particular area they're doing some research in, which is if you've got a solar photovoltaic system on the roof of the building, the EV, the Explorer and EV um, billing management system will actually detect when that solar photovoltaic system might be doing solar export into the grid. And uh, the r and is around instead of sending that uh, solar export out into the grid, diverting that solar power to go into charging electric uh, vehicles that might be um, you know, sitting at the charge points inside the building during a peak solar generation period. Mm -hmm.